Hi, Paul Turley here, and I'm going to talk about performance analysis in Power BI. Now, wait till the end of the recording because I'm going to show you the easiest way to get there after we talk about some background information and show you a few different options. Now, Power BI is a simple business intelligence tool. It has always been a bit of a black box. If you design your queries and you design your data model and your measures and your visuals the right way, then things ought to just be fast. But uh, you can't always take it on faith that everything's going to perform well. When you get into trouble, in the past we really haven't had a lot of options to figure out why queries and measures didn't perform really well. So we do have some great options now. Before we get into that, let's take a look at how we've done this in the past. Now, first thing to, to realize is that behind Power BI, there's actually an instance of SQL Server Analysis Services. This is the VertiPak engine or the Analysis Services tabular modeling engine. And so you actually have access to a lot of the tooling that we've had in Analysis Services for many years. And so let me, let me show you some of these tools that uh, are a little more advanced, might be cumbersome to use, but give you a lot of great advanced features and capabilities. One of the tools that we often use in the community is a third-party tool called DAX Studio. Now, the easiest place to, to uh, go to get DAX Studio is the SQL BI site. But if I run DAX Studio, you'll see that here with my Power BI uh, desktop model open, that I can actually connect to the in-memory tabular model, uh, which is actually the analysis services instance running behind Power BI. And when I connect to that, if you look down in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see that there's a localhost instance with a port number after that. So it's a little known secret that you can actually use that to connect to an instance of analysis services. Now, let's just take a look at DAX Studio. If I come over to the traces group here on the home ribbon, and I say that I want to trace all queries. So now with that trace running, I can actually start interacting with my data. Let me undo that and undo that. Slice on North America, and I'll just select 2009. And of course that changes the visualization in my map. And then if I jump back to DAX Studio, I can look at my most recent queries and um, here in the um, All Queries tab, if I double click on any of the query text, that will actually place that query expression, this uh, DAX query, up here in the editor window. And then I can actually run that query and I could make modifications to it. And we can come back, we can actually see the results. These are the actual results that the map visual used and then for each query that I've captured, I can see how long it took in milliseconds for that query to run. And then since I've captured each query, I can go run it multiple times and see how much variation there is and, you know, perhaps run it, you know, five, ten times, take an average of, of that time um, to figure out how, how long it, it takes queries to run as they compete with other resources. So this is one tool that we've, we've uh, had for some time. It's, it's a very advanced tool. There are a lot of great capabilities, but it can be cumbersome to use, and it does take a little bit of uh, moderate to advanced knowledge um, to be able to, to use this tool. Now that I have my um, local instance and port number, let me remember that, 58652, I can actually use other tools designed for SQL Server Analysis Services. So let's open up SQL Server Profiler. So if I do have uh, the SQL Server client tools installed, then um, I can use SQL Server Profiler to actually trace these queries against the Analysis Services instance. And um, I can do the same kind of thing here. Now I'm not going to take you through all of these steps. Well, I can actually do the same thing here. So 58652. So I can start this profiler trace and I can say I'm only interested in the query begin and the query end. And 
let's say that I, I want to, to, to look at um, events related to the DAX query plan. And then I can run that. And then again, I can interact with my report. And capture that query output. Now this is a, a, a fairly complex and, 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 and cumbersome tool to use. Typically not my go-to tool, but it's just an example of one of several tools that I can use. So great, we've had all of those capabilities and it takes a lot of work to use them, but we now have a brand new capability as of the May release of Power BI Desktop that is just absolutely awesome. And um, it's not even a preview feature, it's just available in the product. If you go to the View ribbon, you can see that here's the Performance Analyzer. So if I turn on Performance Analyzer, you can see that it brings out this new blade titled Performance Analyzer, and I can start recording the traces for my queries as I interact with my visuals. So let's start this recording. And I'm just going to switch this slicer to North America. There you can see that some events fired. And you can see all of the visuals in this report here by name. And I can see the actual queries behind every one of those visuals. So for my slicer, you can see that the DAX query uh, apparently was cached. Um, but it took um, 45 milliseconds to render, and there was 752 milliseconds spent uh, waiting for something to happen. We have this other category. Let's, let's take a look at a more interesting visual. This is my map visual. You can see the, the title up here, which becomes the default name. Now, if you were to show the selection pane and go name these visuals or change the title of those visuals, then um, you would be able to identify them a little more easily um, using those titles and names here. But here you can see that when I interacted with the map, that it took 184 milliseconds for the DAX query to run. It took 410 milliseconds for the visual to actually render, um, but it actually took almost two seconds, uh, 1.9 um, thousand milliseconds for some other activity, which actually makes sense with the map visual because it has to make web service calls and there's some very specialized things that maps do and that falls into this other category. All right, so it's great that we have all of these timings and that's really useful information. But once I've captured some of these queries, I can actually export the results and they're exported out to a JSON format. So you can see that that's going to export out to this JSON file that essentially contains all of this information in a format that you could then import um, using Power Query and then turn that into tabular form so that you could actually visualize and analyze those historical results. Um, when you're done, just go ahead and hit Clear. That starts everything over. I can refresh the visuals and then I can start interacting with my report again. So it's a great tool uh, available in the May edition of Power BI Desktop. Let me know what you think as you use this tool by posting comments to my blog or in the comments below if you're looking at the YouTube video. Thanks for watching.